welcome to my channel. This is Lana. Thank you so much for being here. So in today's message, I just wanted to talk about something that has been coming up and it came for, up for me personally during the last two months or so where I was really questioning whether I should continue to assist and to use the label of the Twin Flames. And I'm going to dive a little deep today into why. So for those of you who are interested in wanting to learn more about how I view the Twin Flame journey, you're more than welcome to grab a cup of tea, perhaps make yourself comfortable and just be in a sacred space to hear this transmission because of course as all of my videos and channels everything that I say of course it's it has a message right and it is important in a certain way but it is also important the energy that is being transmitted through my voice so I invite you to take a deep breath in and just start to relax into this moment start to welcome this fresh air into your lungs and feel that peace that is available for you very good so the reason why this video is called Beyond Twin Flame is because I realized and I have seen amongst other fellow healers as well who are doing the kind of work that I am doing and there aren't so many of us out there in a way because it is not as common this type of work that we do um, and the reason that it's not that common is because there are so many different messages and different personas in the apparently quote-unquote twin flame collective and there are so many people that are misleading and feeding consciously or unconsciously this really really real we could say and we could call it um, you know there are different terminologies but for the sake of this video and for the sake of you understanding and taking it as a metaphor or quite literally depending on where you are we're going to call it the like Eckhart Tolle says, we're going to call it the Egoic Entity. So this Egoic Entity is an energy that actually kind of feeds off of our energies, of the energies of human beings. And it is not like, you know, like an alien or something. It's not something as figurative as that, although I know many people have a lot of imagination. But it is really something that we as humans are purifying out of our systems. So a lot of this virus that happened, a lot of this event that we are living, it has to do with a huge clearing of the grids and purification of the systems and especially of our nervous systems, of our systems and the way we act in the physical world and who we are serving in the physical world. So because we're energy beings, we have energetic fields and our energetic fields go way beyond our physical body, this physical world go way beyond into other realms. 
So the majority of people today and most of the people who are, you know, awakened or are being way showers, they have to be at a level where they're actually able to see way beyond this physical world, way beyond into the fields and way beyond also all of these restrictions that have been placed upon us. So there is a reason why awakening is called awakening because before that we seem to be living in this dream, right? And dreams can be good or bad but the one thing that a dream is is that it's not our current reality. It is somewhere where we travel while we sleep and it's a place that we can visit, it's a place where different things can happen. But it is not the place where we ground in the present moment. So dreams as well as fantasies can be very exhausting, can be very draining, they can of course be wonderful. But there's a moment where you have to wake up out of the dream. So whether your dream has been really pleasant or it has been a nightmare, there's a moment where you have to wake up and face reality and face the present moment. And that is where life occurs, that is where the challenge is. And that is where our energy should be placed in the present moment more and more because when we go into these dreams and I'm not talking about your actual dreams your astral dreams which of course are also used sometimes to harness your energies or our energies but I'm talking about when we project things into the physical world the physical world is going to reflect that back at us. Just the same as we, when we project love into the physical world, the physical world will start to project that love back. The pure, the purer our heart, the purer our motive, the more easily and faster that will, that process will occur. Of course, sometimes we have lessons that we have to go through, so as all, as everything, each one of us, each one of you, have a very particular journey, have a very predetermined or predesigned existence, let's say, that is actually a creation of yours with the divine. You sat down up there. <laughs> in there, inside of your light channel, you sat there with the divine and you saw, okay, this lifetime, I want to learn this, I want to experience this, I need this, and this is also what I'm evolving from, this is also, you know, what some people call karma, or what is called karma in the ancient traditions. And karma is not something that is negative in nature. It's just the result of actions and the result of many, many lifetimes. And the result of an energetic field in the process of evolving to a higher state, to a place where there is more consciousness and where there is more light. So we're all doing this at different scales. We're doing this as a planet, we're doing this as an individual, we're doing this as a soul group, as a monad, etc. So we're working together in our different expressions of being to create this, to generate this, because that is what consciousness does. It becomes more conscious and light becomes even more light. So, in this process that we're all going through, 
the spiritual journey is the journey that your soul takes when you have that initial awakening and that awakening doesn't even mean as much as you know as much as it is said about it of course it does mean (laughs) many things but the main thing is that it is just the calling of your soul waking itself up out of that dream and being able to learn the lessons and to experience life in a more conscious way so many souls are awakened in very very let's say hard situations or through hard experiences or through a lifetime of suffering or illness or pain or some souls are not some are just waken up in a very smooth way but regardless of how that happens how that initial awakening takes place it is just a recognition of the soul that there is something more out there that perhaps the world as it had been shown is not really the definition that the soul made so we start to realize that most of the things that we think we know or that we have perceived until that point were probably all coming from different sources that weren't even our soul itself it was more like programming or unconscious belief systems or social conditioning or fears or doubt or ego so when the soul awakens there is this profound peace that awakens and there is this hope there is this road there is this path that starts to unfold and that is you know what they call or many can call the vision quest that is when the adventure begins when that happens of course all of the darkness all of the shadow that we have inside of ourselves it starts to go through a purification process so this is what they sometimes call the dark night of the soul and you know spiritual communities uh, modern spiritual communities and the buddhists called this the narrow path so what happens when you go into this narrow path is precisely that everything (laughs) becomes very very clear in a way and it starts to just serve you more profoundly now that you have that consciousness once that consciousness awakens in you it starts to guide you it starts to lead you even though you may feel like you're completely out of control losing your mind having all these crazy symptoms and bodies and sensations and all of that truthfully that is just your ego reacting to the light it's like an ego that was so comfortable living in the dark so comfortable living with you know all of the things that ego loves which is stagnancy and you know holding on to the past holding on to the future being afraid of the future rather not move rather stay at home let's just not do this let's play small those are mechanisms of the ego trying to protect but that happens when the ego is running the show but when the soul awakens the soul just goes and takes the wheel and all of a sudden the ego is like the second child you know um or the older child being jealous of the new child that has all the attention so that's a little bit how the ego starts to react and starts to do a lot of things to get your attention and possibly to take you back into a dormant state so the first initiation that you have as a soul when you feel that nudge when you feel that awakening is to actually go through the purification process 
and go all the way. So depending where you are right now, there are many of you who are in that process, who are living that process, and there is a moment of, you know, everything just feeling very uncertain, because of course it feels uncertain, you know, your whole world view, your whole view of yourself, of people, everything that you thought you knew that felt safe and secure, everything starts to crumble and you actually start to see the cracks in everything, you start to see the truth and as you see the truth, as you're seeing the light, darkness crumbles and the structures that were built there by darkness or by unconsciousness will start to crumble. So when that happens, in honor of the light, what you can do is just be still. Sit still and become the observer of your reality crumbling. And I know this sounds pretty, perhaps harsh or strong, but it's really the best advice that I can give you in this sense that the crumbling is going to happen either way and perhaps it will be something that temporarily crumbles and then things start to be rebuilt or maybe the crumbling is a process that will actually take some years and for some it may take a couple of years but for the majority it will take a very long time and perhaps even lifetimes so when we start to see that and when <laughs> I can feel that the soul like oh my god this process is going to take so long yes I mean for the soul what is one lifetime it's just like comparing you know when we think about the lifetime of of a fly and the lifetime of a turtle you know there there are huge you know we can compare our life to the life of a turtle and time is just completely different. So for the soul that is infinite, one lifetime is nothing. <laughs> it's the blink of an eye. So when we are in this process, the more we can actually accept things the way they are, the more we can bow down to the truth that is being shown if we don't know where the truth is, the more we can just hold space for the truth to present itself through our lives, through everything that is around us, the more we can hold space for consciousness, whether within us or around us, the more we actually invite that energy and the more easy or the easier we're able to transform, the smoother the ride. When this happens, the majority of people will go into a lot of um, contrast or drama or, you know, you can really see when a person is being transformed very rapidly because there's a lot of drama around that person because the ego feels completely threatened by the light that is coming in. So it tries all ways of keeping things the way they were. So what happens is that there's a part of our human mind, you know, or there's a part of, it's actually our pain body and our emotional body. Those are the ones that react first to that battle between the ego and the light, between the consciousness in us and the light and sorry, the ego in us and the light in us. So it's kind of like this image of the angel and the devil, you know, the small, like they put it in cartoons and stuff. You have that inside of you. So, you know, the ego may be the devil because it's always trying to keep you away from the light from more consciousness but it's only doing so because not because it's bad or because it is um, you know it has a negative connotation but 
it's usually because ego is the most easiest part of us to um, be pursued by you know these energies that are not in alignment with the light to put it in a way so ego in reality is like a little child and the little child that goes into fear so when that happens he tries to find comfort you know wherever he may find comfort and in that process there is a part of us that is completely innocent and there are like this egoic um, entity that I was talking about in the beginning let's say that this part tries to take like to convince the innocent child to you know perhaps take the wrong turn or perhaps go in the wrong direction and it offers the child sweets and it offers the child you know whatever the child is looking for in that moment whatever would comfort the child in its most primal nature probably or in its more most um, vulnerable nature and when this happens the child is like okay so the ego says okay well you're selling me this you're you're giving you're gonna give me candy so I'll probably go with you because that sounds more comforting than you know than actually hearing the truth that may not be as comfortable so the light kind of stands there saying but hey you know perhaps I wasn't offering candies perhaps with me you would have to go on a quite a journey but in the end of my journey you're going to find all the riches and all the love and divinity and you're going to discover who you are and in that other path where this egoic entity is if the child goes there because of the candy the child doesn't know that the candy is just a way to distract the child and to take him off path and off course and to stall the child's growth and maturity and evolution so knowing that we have the child inside of us we have our innocence our purity and we have always a choice to align with divine truth and divine guidance no matter how hard it is because that is usually the hardest path that is why it is the hero's journey that is why you know people who walk the path and people who go into the path of spirituality it is a narrow path and it is a path that doesn't always offer you instant rewards and it doesn't offer instant um, gratification and it doesn't offer illusion but it also will never ever lie to you it will never deceive you it will never try to manipulate you and it will never take your innocence for granted so when we understand that as human beings we can understand that the path of the light may not always look like the happiest path and if you talk to healers if you talk to people who have really walked the path they have probably had the hardest lives ever <laughs> just to be able to purify to the to the degree that they have when i talk about my path of course i talk about certain things in order to bring them up in a way that you can relate to them but there are, there are so many parts in my path that I will you know continue to share but there were many many years in my path that were the hardest in my life so far <laughs> but were also the best for my soul and for my purification process and of course while I was going through them 
I wasn't the happiest soul ever and you know there was quite a bit of resistance perhaps but very soon it just became so clear that the light was guiding me and even though sometimes that meant hearing things that I didn't want to hear it meant hearing the truth and I honored that divine truth is something that is presented to you the moment you are able to honor it it is always there but you are the one who can make room for it to enter and to fill up your life and to fill up your path and to light up everything it's like you have this beautiful shining lantern and you're going in this road that is not very bright so you have the capacity to go through that path without lighting up your lantern or you can go surrendering to the light lighting up your light when you surrender to divine truth which means surrendering to the truth the highest truth that can possibly come into you that can possibly make its way into your awareness into your perception that is when you surrender to God you surrender to the divine and when that happens you open the door for so many things to unfold because before you do that all of the things that happen before you get to that point are only happening so that you can actually get to the point of surrendering because we as humans do not hold all of the intelligence of the light we don't hold the consciousness within our minds or within our ego or within any conscious part of us or any tangible part of us we hold our divine truth and our divine light within in our divine channel and that is a part of us that connects us to all of the higher dimensions and that is a part of us that you know people call the higher self it is just you in other dimensions but in order to access such high consciousness all of your systems have to be prepared and they have to go through purification in order to be able to receive the light as you go through purification even if it's just a little bit just a little bit of light is able to come in so just seeing and feeling how this energy is starting to open up path paths pathways in your body for those of you who are willing and are ready to receive Knowing that there is no judgment and that we're all in different paths we are all in different moments of our journeys but the one thing that I really want to share with you is that the concept of twin flame has been so manipulated and used and used really as a way to kind of feed this egoic entity and these systems that were in place and to continue to imprison people as opposed to actually bring in the light of consciousness and the light of truth and this is no one's fault of course there are many people who are innocently delivering very false information or very um, let's say information that is already being manipulated and that they are just giving it to thousands and thousands of people without really knowing how damaging it can be and there are also a lot of people who are profiting immensely through these terminologies through using the terminology without really understanding what it truly means and the problem here is that in order to understand 
the highest truth of a concept, you have to have walked and experienced that path and you have to be tapped into that divine consciousness which goes well beyond this physical dimension and brings back those that divine truth and it can really be anchored so the more someone is anchored in their divine truth the clearer the messages that are able to be transmitted through that person and so many people that are transmitting these messages and there's this no judgment to anyone this is just so you can understand a little bit of why there is so much confusion and there is so much um, darkness really there is so much and darkness not in a bad way but in a way that people are being held in the dark of what of what the truth of what divine truth is and when someone is being kept from the truth or someone is withholding truth whether consciously or unconsciously the messages that will go through that person or that will be transmitted won't be serving the people won't be serving the other souls who are actually wanting to know the truth so it will probably serve those who really 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 don't want to face the truth and who will rather you know get the candy um, instead of going through a purification process but for the ones who are really wanting to know the truth and who are tired of being in the darkness there's always a chance and there's always a way that you can align with that divine truth and that you can get to the places where divine truth can be actually transmitted. And this is not something easy and this is also not something easy for light workers and for the way showers that are here now or for the people who are doing healing work, um, for my fellow healers who are, you know, of the same let's say same uh, experience or mentality or that we resonate together because of course we all have our different right soul groups and different you know people and souls that we are actually working with and resonating with so this is not an easy process but it is something that is very necessary and this is also why I'm here speaking to you and I'm bringing this concept in very slowly so that you're able to understand it and you have time to actually process this energetic information when these people who are perhaps not awakened or they are in a process of awakening but they are not really in a process where or they're not really in a place where they are being pure channels and perhaps they don't even know it but the thing that happens is that the people who are listening to them and you know who are getting all of these candies fed basically they start to you know instead of them being fed by that candy or that fantasy or that dream the ones who serve as you know this energy or the ones that are losing their energy that are losing time that are being stalled are exactly those people so along my journey and this has never been uncommon in spirituality you can see this in all kinds of different times and eras where spirituality has been used as a way to manipulate people and it has been used to the benefit of the great powers or the great yeah, powers that be in the world to put it in a way so we can look into religion from the beginning of time we can look into so many different systems that use 
or that have used spirituality or some kind of a spiritual um, community or you know the sects or even you know just spiritual teachers and um, and some gurus and this has been a case in everywhere where you know where there is light there can always there's always the contrast or at least that was what we lived in the in the past because we were so much in duality and these things played out in the field so on the one hand we had like super strict you know um, spiritual path and on the other hand it was the complete opposite so the thing that I would suggest for everybody and the thing that I look for in my work and the thing that I look for in the work of others and what truly holds things at the end is integrity and it's and this integrity is far more than the moral concept of integrity integrity is the integrity of the light it is the mission of the light worker to keep the light sacred to keep the light shining to keep the light pure it is the mission of the healer to have the light in the highest interest of everybody to hold the light where it can be shown to the majority of people whether this is comfortable to the people or not whether it is accepted or not it is the integrity of the teachings that actually make them benefit others and it is the truth of divine love and the truth and purity of intention that allows healing to occur and miracles to occur so not everybody operates in that level of light and not everybody can even grasp or see or understand that level of light you can perhaps sense it in a way that is undescribable or in a way that you can just feel it and that is the beauty of being a human being that although we perhaps aren't able to grasp the full spectrum of something when we um, tune into ourselves when we tune into that space of calm when we're able to turn down the mind we are able to receive that divine intuition and that divine knowledge and we're able to differentiate if this is something that is serving us or not if this is something that is preventing me from the light or if this is something that is encouraging the light and sometimes duality encourages the light as well so there are people who have to go through massive amounts of suffering and that signed up for that perhaps even through many lifetimes and that is what they need to do in order to perhaps in the 50th timeline or its 15th um, lifetime be awakened so we're all on different paths and probably you know the most evolved beings have gone through everything but there is really this place of light that is you know like the light at the end of the tunnel and the light at the end the end of the tunnel is the light within you and that is the light of truth divine truth when you seek divine truth in everything when you seek divine truth in yourself when you seek divine truth beyond your emotions beyond concepts beyond what people have said beyond labels beyond any limitation that's when you can find yourself as the radiant being that you are and that's when you get your innocence back and that's when you start to protect it and you never let that innocence be played in any way because you have gotten your light back So for me this is something that I hold very close to my heart because you know as you know my brother's birthday is coming up 
And my brother is a person who has a special needs and he has the mentality of a four-year-old um, but he's actually much much older so one of the things that I learned through living with him because he's two years older than me it was that in a sense is one of our greatest treasures and it is something that is so worth honoring and protecting so this has been a mission that I have always had I don't even know where it came from it just you know it just was there I was two years old and I was there holding my brother's hand while he had a seizure and it wouldn't go to sleep and my parents were like go to sleep you know what are you doing here you're too little to be here I was like nope I'm not going anywhere I'm going to stay here with my brother and I'm going to protect him so when I grew up I saw that the most vulnerable people are the ones who have kind of like such a great blessing but they're also more vulnerable to attack or vulnerable to certain situations if they're not protected properly so some of you have heard me say to take care of your flame and to take care of your light and to safeguard the light that you have and this is for me the ultimate like cornerstone of your ascension path of your spiritual journey of any journey that you may have because when we start to see ourselves as something so precious and so valuable that even forces of light and dark are fighting for, let's say, you know, to put it in a very dramatic movie way, when you start to see that the innocence within you, the light within you, that you are responsible for that light, that you are able to protect that light, and that you are able to ensure that that light goes unharmed through its path on this lifetime or through all lifetimes when you start to see and discover the purity and the innocence within you and you let the light of truth guide you you surrender to the light of truth divine truth the truth that comes only, that is only between you and God. That truth. When you let that truth take care of your innocence, your innocence will always be protected. And there will be less and less and less duality. And any remaining shadows that may have been there, any remaining concepts, any remaining fears, any rema remaining attachments to things, fears of losing things, fears of letting go, all of those things will slowly start to exit your life. And as they exit your life, they will exit your emotional body, they will be washed away of your pain body. And when this process is happening, it is normal to feel tears, it is normal to be emotional, it is normal to have all kinds of processes. But when we know that we are honoring the divine truth and the divine light within us, no matter what the process is and no matter how painful it may seem in a way or uncomfortable, it's not really painful, it's more like uncomfortable. Although sometimes we're also forced to go through very painful experiences but most of it is just an echo of our past life and the pain that we feel is actually lifetimes of stored pain or it's just the pain of parts of our ego letting go or the last battle of the ego holding on for dear life to certain things or concepts or aspects or self-identification what I'm doing in this transmission is just inviting you 
to tap into that light and to that divine truth within you and to start to prepare the soil for this new awareness to start to open up your mind, your concepts, the perspectives and just to update those perspectives, those references, those reference points all of the concepts that you have ever believed, all of the things that you have ever believed, all of the people that you have ever followed, consciously or unconsciously. And when you do that, even just through your intention, when you say, I want to update all the ways in which I relate to the world, all the ways in which I give my power away to people, I want to bring that power back to myself. I bring all of my innocence that I ever gave away, consciously or unconsciously. And I bring it back to me, back to the light where it belongs, back to my flame, back to my light inside of my channel. And I give back all of the false light concepts, all of the false information, all of the false perspective, all of the restrictions and constrictive concepts that I adopted unconsciously or consciously and I give that all back and I declare myself an integral pure divine being and I walk as a light and I walk as divinity and I let the divinity inside of me guide me no one else if I need answers I go to the divinity inside of me And if I receive information, I always check with the divinity inside of me. So letting the divinity inside of you, the higher truth, the higher wisdom, be the judge of what you need, not your ego. Because the ego will always want candy. (laughs) The ego will always want that which feels safe for the ego. And usually it will try to stop you from growing because growing is uncomfortable for the ego. So when we know this, we can actually sit down with that part of us that feels threatened or that feels scared or that feels unsafe. We can identify it as the ego and we can say, you know, to our inner child, inner child or the part of me that is you know, scared. I see you. I love you. I'm here to hold you. But we're going to go through this and we're going to surrender this fear to the light. And very lovingly, you can take that little child's hand, that little ego, ego's hand. <laughs> I always see it like a little, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the persona from Lilo and Stitch, it's kind of like Stitch, that's the way a little bit, like the ego, and Lilo is divine truth. (laughs) So, you know, the ego, we have, you know, a little bit of a character, and it may do, throw a couple of tantrums and a little bit of drama, but when you see that tantrum, drama, and resistance is going on, even if it's a very small part of you, perhaps it's even anger, or pain, or it's even anger masking the pain, you can go very gently and ask all of that to be released in the name of your divine truth. Go and hold the hand of the divine truth of God and say, God, I release this for now and forevermore. I don't want to carry this pain anymore and I want to see the light. I want to shine brighter. I want to be the witness of divine truth and I want to take care and protect my infinity, my innocence, my purity, my freedom. And when you do that and you fully take responsibility of you, that's when there is no more blaming and there is no more perpetuating pain. Pain becomes something that, if it has to happen, it just comes and goes. Emotions become something that just come and go. Even challenges become something 
that just come and go. And you start to live by your divine truth, by that divine awareness of who you truly are as an eternal being. So just bring that in. And we will continue with this video, this series of videos, because I think it was enough information for today. But I will pick up on this in the next video to go more deeply into the whole going beyond the twin flame concept. And I love you all. And I hope that this brings a little bit of light into your lives. And I'm always here for you. So take care and be blessed.